Hello learners, I am Dr. Vishal Sood, teacher educator. In the previous unit, you have studied about the teaching learning process, its different components, the different methods and strategies which are employed for the transaction of curriculum. Now, today we are going to discuss about the process that is most important in teaching learning process in the curriculum transaction process and that process is known as measurement, assessment or evaluation. Now these processes, these names are sometimes interchangeably used. Today we will discuss about the meaning, the concept of these processes, what we mean by measurement, what we mean by assessment or what we mean by evaluation and how these evaluation, measurement or assessment processes are being carried out by teachers to make teaching learning process productive and useful. So our today's discussion will be focused on these points that first is, first we will discuss about the components of teaching learning process. The second point of discussion will be certain queries which will be related to the teaching learning process or the examination or the evaluation process which is carried out in the schools or in the classrooms by the teachers. Those queries will be dealt by us today and then we will discuss about the concept of measurement and in the last we will discuss about the concept and purposes of assessment. So first we will discuss about the components of teaching learning process. Now as you know that teaching learning process has two major component, one the teacher who is the transactor of the curriculum and the learners who are the recipients of the knowledge or the information given by the teachers. So this means first and foremost important component of teaching learning processes that is teacher and the second is the learners. Then the main function of teacher in teaching learning process in classroom transaction processes that is the employment of instructional strategies. The teacher uses different instructional strategies, different methods to transact curriculum in the classroom. Then the third component of teaching learning process as you can see on the screen that the curriculum is the major part of teaching learning process and this curriculum contains two things. First is the content and the second is the activities which are undertaken by the teachers to transact that curriculum to provide the knowledge and understanding to the student. And the last and uh, most important part of teaching learning process is the assessment. This assessment is carried out to see whether the objectives of teaching learning process have been achieved or not. Second, this assessment is carried out to observe whether the teacher has succeeded in transacting the curriculum effectively or reaching to the level of the students. So these are the main four components. First, the teacher and learners. Second, the curriculum or the content and the activities taken by the teacher to transact that curriculum. The third is the instructional strategies or the methods adopted by the teacher to transact the curriculum. And the last component is assessment to assess to know whether the objectives of teaching have been achieved or to know whether the teacher has succeeded in accomplishing its objectives or not. So these are the major components of teaching learning process. Now how to carry out this assessment? Learners, you all are teachers. You plan your activities in the class. You transact the curriculum. You impart the instruction to the student in the classroom. And at the last, you wish to know whether your students have learned the content or not. Whether they have understood the concepts, different concepts that you have covered during that uh, uh, content matter or not. This is the major part that you must uh, want, wish to know. Now for this, we follow the process of evaluation. And this evaluation process, sometimes it is uh, synonymously interchanged with the other terms like assessment, examination, measurement. But these all terms have different meanings. So today now we will discuss about these terms, what we mean by measurement, what we mean by assessment, what we mean by evaluation. So first, 
the uh, before going to that we must have certain queries related to assessment first query if do the marks or the grades obtained in different subjects represent the actual performance of the student when you evaluate as a teacher you evaluate your students do the marks or the grades obtained by those students in different subject or in your concerned subject represent the actual performance of those students or not this is the first question you must ask second thing do they tell anything about the learning style whether the marks obtained by the students tell anything about the learning style or the way of the learning or the study habits of the individual student how that student has learned how what type of learning style he or she has employed to learn that particular content matter the third query that you must ask that you must have in your mind whether those marks indicate anything about the difficulties a student has faced during learning whether the marks indicate that or not this is also one of the question that must be arisen when we follow or when we employ the process of evaluation now whether the marks provide information on the areas of the strength or the weaknesses of the student in the learning where are the strength of that particular students what are the particular weaknesses of that student in learning that particular content matter whether the marks tell anything about these strengths or weaknesses or the learning difficulties then another query which you must raise that is whether the marks tell anything about the extent and the pace of learning as you know in the classroom there are some slow learners there are learners who have a greater pace who has a greater speed of learning whether the marks tell anything about the extent or the pace of the learning of the students then can all the aspects or the areas of learning in all subject content matter or the course scholastic activities be scored or graded can be score different activities different co curricular activities or how to score or how to grade in those activities can we do that is there any alternative or supplementary mechanism to assess learning in a better way presently it is witnessed that we try to assess the students learning through marks through testing techniques but is there any alternative or any other option available with us or any other supplementary mechanism that can assess the learning among the students in a better way so these are the queries which we must ask to ourselves while as a teacher we assess or evaluate our students because this assessment or this evaluation tells us about the efficacy of the teaching learning process the understanding that the student has gained after uh, undergoing the curriculum transaction in the classroom so these queries must be raised by us and accordingly as a teacher we must assess the learners or the students in a particular appropriate and a proper manner so now in order to answer all these queries we have different terms one is measurement the second is the assessment and the third is the evaluation now first we will discuss about the meaning of measurement what we mean by measurement measurement refers to the process by which the attributes or the dimensions or the characteristics of some object or phenomena are quantified that means measurement is a process by which we try to quantify or we try to nominate the characteristics or the aspects or the attributes of any object in terms of some number that means we assign numbers we assign scores we assign marks to a particular attribute of any object measuring means any aspect is to state the particular attribute like now these attributes may be age this attribute may be weight height length time that is in terms of quantity and quant this quantity is expressed through the number of unit of measurement like year for age so measuring any aspect is to state the particular attribute in terms of quantity 
and that quantity is expressed through the number of units of measurement. For example, you can see that this is a scale. You all have, as a teacher, you all have used this scale in your classroom, which is used to measure the length of different objects. On the one side, you can see this scale has centimeters marked on this. And on the other side of this scale, on the lower side or bottom side of this scale, we have inches. So when we measure the length or height or breadth of any object, we try to measure that attribute. That attribute is length. Suppose length of a particular book, how much lengthy a particular book is. So that length is the particular attribute of that object. Now we will try to measure the length of that. Now the, suppose the length of that particular book is 15 centimeter. Now what we did? We did, we measured the length of that particular book and that length or the particular attribute of that book is measured or is expressed in terms of quantity that is it is 15 centimeters lengthy. And 15 is the quantity and the centimeter which is attached or suffixed with that 15 is that is known as the unit of measurement. That means measurement has two things. One is the quantity and that quantity has certain unit of measurement. So measurement means quantifying the characteristics, quantifying the attributes, quantifying the qualities of any object in terms of quantity as well as in terms of expressing that in terms of unit of measurement. Now, how old am I? I am 50 years old. 50 is the quantity, years is the unit of measurement. So this is the process of measurement. Now, how we can measure learning achievement? When we talk of the classroom transaction process, when we talk of the teaching learning process, then what we want to measure in the classroom? We want to measure the achievement of the student. We want to measure the learning achievement of the students in different uh, subjects. Now, how to measure that learning achievement? For measuring the learning achievement of the students in different objects, we use certain tests. We use or we employ examinations. So these tests are the instruments which are particularly used to measure the learning achievement or the academic achievement of the students. And on the basis of those tests, we assign them marks we assign them scores. So that means for measuring any attribute, any characteristic of any object, we must have certain standard instrument or scale to measure that particular attribute. Just like this scale. This scale is a standard instrument. If this scale is telling that this particular book is 15 centimeters long, then this will be a universally valid truth that this particular book, whether in this place or in any place throughout the globe, will have the same length that is 15 centimeter, either measured with the help of this scale or measured with the help of any other standardized scale. The length of that particular book will remain the same. So in case of object, it is true that some standard instrument or scale is used to measure the extent or to measure the quality or the attribute of an object. But when we talk of the classroom transaction process, when we uh, discuss about the teaching learning process, then the attributes which are to be measured by the teacher is the learning achievement. The learning achievement, to measure the learning achievement, the teachers usually make the students to answer oral or written questions. A question paper is given to the student in the written form, in the concerned subject, and that question paper has been developed by the teachers systematically during monthly or half yearly or annual examination. That question paper is called a test. And that test is undertaken by the student and the marks obtained by that particular student on that test 
that is the process that what he uh, the teacher had did what the teacher had done that is he has measured the learning achievement of the student in particular subject and for measuring the learning achievement of the student in that particular subject what he has used he has used a test but here we must differentiate between the two things first is the standard scale used to measure the physical qualities or the physical characteristic of an object and the scales which are used to measure the learning achievement which are of the students of the human beings which were, which are not static in nature which are dynamic in nature so here is a difference when we measure the physical attributes when we measure the physical characteristics of any object then the quantity or the units of measurement that will be universally valid but in case of the measurement of the learning achievement of the students it is not true that at a particular uh, time if a teacher as a teacher you have taken the test of the students then one student if getting 40 marks out of 100 it is not necessary at the other occasion the same test if given to the same student that student will gain 40 marks out of 100 it may be possible that that student may progress towards 50 60 or 70 or it may be possible that the achievement of that student may come to the lower level it may be 30 or 20 so that means the learning achievement of the students measured by the teachers through the uh, help of the tests it is not static or it is not universally uh, same uh, all the time it may change because the learning achievement it is a psychological characteristic it is a behavioral characteristic of the teacher and it may change depending on the occasion depending on the experiences gained by the individual learner during a, a particular period of time so for measuring the learning achievement or for measurement of the academic achievement of the student we generally use uh, the standard instrument or the standard scale now what we mean by assessment assessment is a one step ahead process of the measurement one question that you must ask here is whether all the qualities whether all the human characteristics can be assessed can be measured or can be quantified this is a question so here comes in picture the process of assessment assessment is a process by which information is obtained relative to some known objective or goal that means assessment is a process which is done on the basis of or on the basis of some known objective or a goal an objective is there a goal is there on the basis or keeping into consideration that particular objective or the goal the process of assessment is undertaken by the teacher assessment of learning refers to collection of all possible data and evidences with respect to learning of concepts in a particular subject that means what is the difference between measurement and assessment in measurement the qualities or the characteristics or the attributes are only measured or only quantified whereas in the process of assessment we try to collect different type of data or the evidences with regard to learning of the concepts in a particular subjects the weaknesses or the limitations of measurement are overcome in the process of assessment what are the particular learning styles of a particular student what are the particular learning difficulties of a particular learning student uh, what is the pace of the learning of a particular student regarding all these aspects of the students learning the data are collected in the process of assessment that means the assessment process is both quantitative in nature as well as qualitative in nature that means assessment in itself includes the process of measurement measurement is a uh, has a narrower scope whereas the assessment process has a wider scope the assessment data may be numerical or quantitative like marks or scores 
Suppose as a teacher, you took the test of the students. Either it may be a oral test or it may be a written test. Now you assigned marks or you assigned scores to the students. So this data are numerical or quantitative in nature. So this is also a part of assessment. That means measurement is a part of assessment. And in assessment, we also collect data that is that are qualitative in nature, like interest in learning of the concepts. How much interest has been shown by the student in learning of a particular concepts? What was the participation level of that particular student in the classroom? How much he has participated in teaching learning process? What was the level of his involvement in subject related activities? What was his pace of learning? How he has helped his peers in the class to learn the concepts? So all these aspects are also taken into consideration. The data regarding all these concepts, the study habits, the learning styles, or the classroom participation level of the student, all these aspects are also taken into consideration in the process of assessment. And on the basis of this, both measurement, that is the assigning the marks and the scores, and these qualitative aspects, these make the process assessment. So assessment is a wider process. Assessment has more scope as compared to the process of measurement. On the basis of assessment data, we can take steps for facilitating or enhancing learning. That means the assessment is a process on the basis of which we can initiate steps to remove the difficulties of the students. We can take steps to enhance learning among them. So as earlier we said that assessment is a process which is based on certain goal or certain objectives. And that objective may be the improvement of learning or that objective may be the removal of the particular learning difficulties of the students. So that means assessment is a process by which we try to observe what are the particular learning styles of the students. What learning styles have been adopted by the students? What are the learning difficulties faced by those students? And on the basis of that particular observation, on the basis of that particular data, we can take steps to facilitate learning, to remove their particular learning difficulties and enhance learning among them. Then an assessment of learning is always done with this definite purpose or purposes. As we have already discussed, that assessment of learning means there must be a certain purpose. Why the learning process is being undertaken? Why the teaching learning process is being undertaken by the teacher? What are the major purposes of the teaching learning process? So in order to assess the learning or that teaching learning process must have certain objective. Each and every assessment is done to address specific issues of learning that a teacher faces while teaching in the classroom. This means that every assessment carried out by the teacher is to address a particular goal or a particular objective or a specific issue of learning. That specific issue of learning may be the particular learning difficulties. That specific issue may be the enhancement of learning. So every assessment has certain specific issue which must be addressed by that process of assessment. Now in English or in languages there are recurring spelling mistakes by the students. Now these recurring spelling mistakes, why these spelling mistakes are being uh, happening in the class? What are the things which a student is not able to understand in order to address these specific issues? The assessment may be carried out by the teacher. What are the particular learning difficulties? So the goal or the specific objective of assessment will be to remove the recurring spelling difficulties or the spelling mistakes of the student. Other mistakes may be the mistakes committed while carrying over is involved in the addition of two three digit numbers. In the lower classes, in the primary classes, you must have witnessed students who face difficulties while adding three digit numbers or carrying over while adding the two three digit numbers. They faced problems in carrying 
carry over one digit to the other part. So in that particular case, you can find out the particular learning difficulties or the mistakes which are committed by those students so that those mistakes or so that those errors could be removed and learning could be enhanced. So there the assessment objective will be to remove those learning mistakes while carrying over is involved in addition. So there are many instances as you are yourself you are teacher you must have witnessed a number of specific issues in different subject matters in different content areas where the students face difficulties. So in order to find out the causes of those learning difficulties and how to address those learning difficulties, how to enhance the learning among the students, the process of assessment is carried out. And for that carrying out that process of assessment, you also follow the process of measurement you take the test of the student. When you take the test of the student, that is the process of measurement. You assign the scores to the students on the basis of that test. Those scores, assigning of scores or assigning of marks, that is the process of measurement. But you also try to identify the mistakes, the learning difficulties, the causes of those learning difficulties or you also observe the interest of the student in particular uh, learning or you also observe the classroom participation level in the of the student. So all these are the parts which are covered in the process of assessment. Now assessment is carried out to know the exact status of specific learning issue. The teacher tries to assess the students with specific tools that means in measurement the only the marks or the scores are assigned on the basis of a particular test designed by the teacher for all the students. But in case of assessment, we use certain specific tools. These specific tools may be diagnostic tests. These specific tools may be the personal interaction of the teacher with the student, the personal interaction of one teacher with the other teacher, the personal interaction of the teacher with the parents. On the basis of those interactions or other observations in other classes, these are the tools which can be used by the teacher to identify what are the particular learning difficulties, why that student is not reaching to the level or why that particular student is committing the mistakes. So in assessment, we try to identify those mistakes, we try to identify those learning difficulties and we try to address those learning difficulties or to remove those difficulties and enhance learning among the students. That means in assessment, we not only make use of single test, but rather we use different devices to identify the learning difficulties or the learning mistakes and try to remove through different measures. So we can differentiate between measurement and assessment as measurement is quantitative in nature. Only the scores or marks are assigned in the process of measurement. The device used or the scale used or the instrument used in measurement is generally a test comprising of a number, certain number of questions based on certain content matter. So that is uh, the process of measurement. In assessment, assessment is both quantitative in nature as well as qualitative in nature. That means assessment includes measurement. And in assessment, we are not only, uh, or we are not only uh, focused on quantitative data, rather the data regarding the student's learning styles, his study habits, his pace of learning or the other attributes related to his learning are the data regarding different aspects are collected through different devices and assessment is having certain specific goal. That means assessment is carried out to address a particular learning issue, to address particular learning difficulties and to remove those learning difficulties. Secondly, assessment is undertaken to enhance learning among the students. 
and in order to carry out assessment process we make use of number of devices to collect different type of data related to qualitative aspects as well as quantitative aspects of the teaching learning process. Now learners what we have learned in this lesson first we discussed about the different components of teaching learning process and in that we discussed about the most important part that is the teacher and the learners. Then we discussed about the second component that is the curriculum or the activities undertaken by the teacher. Then the third component of teaching learning process was the instructional strategies or the methods adopted by the teacher to transact the curriculum in the teaching in the classroom or the in the schools. Then the foremost part of teaching learning process was the assessment and then we in detail we discussed about the process of measurement and assessment. Firstly we discussed about the meaning of measurement and how that measurement is carried out in the school or in the classroom processes. Then we discussed about the concept of assessment and how that process is different from measurement and lastly we discussed about different purposes of the assessment. So I hope that you all have understood about the concept, the importance, the process and the purposes of measurement and assessment. Thank you. Have a good day.